thank you, uh, JB, for chairing and for everyone for coming. I'll talk a little bit about the work of the association in 2021 at the end of the, and after the meeting, Teal will get a lot more into our research and we'll talk a lot more. But 2021 was, as JB alluded to, a very exciting year for the BCHA. Uh, I pulled up some of the headlines I could find from 2021. We didn't actually have as many headlines this past year as I'd hoped, but you know, we still managed to get coverage in the Georgia Strait, in Czech News, in CBC, over a number of the concerns we raised. Our two big releases in the year, and I'm sure Teal will talk about this, are our two major reports released. Uh, the first was the first of our now series of April Fool's Day jokes. This was on the astrological star signs of MLAs. Basically, we had a large database of MLAs and their birth dates, and we decided to try to really poke fun at legislative prayer from a slightly different angle. And I think this went over quite well with our members, and so did the 2022 report. Um, the other one we did, we teased at the last AGM, was the clergy residence deduction. This is when you do your income taxes, there's a little checkbox you can say that you are a clergy member and then you can essentially deduct the cost of your housing from your income. Uh, we work this out. This will save a couple thousand dollars to the average person's tax bill. That's money right back in their pocket. Uh, it costs the federal tax pay, federal government $100 million a year. And over the last 10 years, it's cost a billion dollars. So this isn't, it's not the largest expense the government has, but it's also not pennies. And it's one that's been around and kind of unquestioned for quite a while. So it was really fun to dig into that. And thanks to Adriana for doing a ton of work on that. We also did two uh, infographic type reports, one on private school funding, really looking at where the different kinds of private schools are in the province, the independent schools. And our legislative prayer across Canada infographic actually came out first in 2021 or 2020, sorry, but we had to update it because Nova Scotia uh, abolished prayer this past year, which was great to see. So good job, Nova Scotia Legislative Assembly uh, on updating that. Uh, our research was also at academic conferences. The Non-Religion Secularity Research Network invited us and we've become very good friends with them. It's a great group of researchers across the world who study atheists and the non-religious and Teal, myself, Adriana and Katie, who's on the call, all presented a kind of a panel that was very well received there. And we managed to have uh, a great respondent who actually was one of the witnesses on the Quebec uh, municipal prayer case. Uh, she actually, I think, was on the other side, but it was an interesting discussion and we've made a lot of good contacts out of there. Uh, and this paper right above my head was in the Canadian Parliamentary Review. This is a journal that goes out to every MLA, MP and parliament, parliamentarian in Canada. And we got to write up our report. And like all of this is uh, coming out of work we did in 2018 and 2019. And so our work is still just in a way being recycled and we're still getting use out of it and it's still having splashes and having impacts as well as we continue to generate new research as i talked about on the private school stuff we also worked on a number of campaigns we finally saw the passage of uh amendment to the criminal code banning conversion therapy in 2021 that came into effect early this year that was a political football that the federal government had been toying with for quite a while as they said, we'll do it, but then dragging their heels on the legislation. What ended up working out for us though, is that the final bill was stronger than any of the previous versions. And because of internal conservative party machinations, uh, they ultimately voted unanimously with the government to pass it. And so the bill moved through, I think faster than anyone was expecting, mainly because Aaron O'Toole was trying to save his leadership and shut down the social conservatives in his party. Doesn't really matter. We won <laughs> and it's good. Didn't work out for him though. Uh, we also had some success in moving forward on a number of other issues and joining different calls. We have always been an organization like most humanist groups, unafraid of weighing in on social policies uh, we've supported the Access BC campaign for free contraceptive in the last year, and we also joined early in the year a call to decriminalize poverty in Vancouver and to support uh, 
you know, a large number of organizations that support a more public health approach to uh, the toxic drug crisis. One we're seeing changes on just today, although these changes that will come into effect next year, we'll have more to say on that coming up. COVID also continued to be a thing last year and in a number of different ways, we tried to look at what is the intersection between religion and public health measures. And we found, you know, early in the year when churches were forced to be closed by the government, some churches like this one up here in Vancouver decided to just call themselves a support group, which was allowed to happen. And we tried to expose that and bring that to attention of authorities. Uh, we also joined a number of groups in calling for greater transparency, something that unfortunately I think many places have backslid as testing has reduced and the amount of access to public health officials has just declined. So we don't win every battle, but we do pick our fights. And we did call for uh, equality in an approach between uh, public health rules, whether it's um, religious groups or secular groups. And the big one there was around the vaccine cards and masking requirements. And we ended up getting quite a few people supporting our calls on the public health officer to not give these exemptions to religious groups that aren't available to anyone else. We had a number of blogs written over the year. These covered ranging topics ranging from the prayer breakfast to private schools to uh, more on COVID exemptions and private tax, uh, property tax exemptions uh, and religion in public schools. And we'll continue to investigate these on kind of one-off basis. Uh, we also held a number of events. They were all online in the last year and they're all available on our YouTube channel now, as well as our podcast, I believe, uh, covering things like the Trinity Western University case, uh, property tax exemptions, history of atheism came up a couple of times. Uh, and in November, we had a great talk actually with a number of US non-religious people who are elected officials and they talked about the challenges they face. I really enjoyed that one. And as JB alluded to, we were in court. Uh, the main you know, thing we heard about in early 2021 was actually a case we were involved in at the Supreme Court of Canada in 2020. This was a ruling on a very esoterically named case, Ethiopian Orthodox to Wahudu Church of Canada, St. Mary Cathedral and its directors versus the five members who were expelled for heresy we ultimately took the heretics side, arguing that the organized the church should have to follow its bylaws and should be subject to judicial review. The Supreme Court of Canada ultimately sided with the church, but they did so for secular reasons, which we considered a win. The big fear here and the reason we got involved in this really technical inter church dispute was a concern that the court could set a separate law for religious organizations that wouldn't necessarily apply to secular organizations. And they didn't open that door, at least, though they had the opportunity to. And we've also been slowly working our way to try to get in on this human rights case that uh, involved uh, the White Rock Pride Society wanting to host its annual pride fundraiser or their fundraising event at the local community hall that was run by the Catholic Church, the Star of the Sea uh, Catholic Community Center. The community center had denied them the opportunity to meet there. And they said, this is discrimination. You're doing it because we're gay. And they pretty much said as much. And the Catholics said they should have the right to deny their community center that they argue is open to all to people they disagree with. We were granted leave to make arguments in that case around religious freedom and organizations offering commercial services to the public. Ultimately, just this spring, the two parties uh, came to or got pretty close enough to an agreement that they decided to adjourn the case. So we won't actually get to make our day in court. But I guess that's the best outcome for the White Rock Pride Society, even if we don't get to yell about it. It was shaping up to be a very weird case as three more religious organizations got leave to intervene after us. And then one more secular organization was granted leave. So there were going to be five interveners at the Human Rights Tribunal where they usually have none. Uh, and I think that was starting to just worry everyone except all the interveners who were just like salivating at the fun of it. Finally, I just want to say a little bit about the team we had this past year. Uh, Emily Fagan, 
uh, and Adriana Tom are no longer with us, but have but did a, a great amount of work since they joined us in summer of 2020. Uh, your support has managed to help us keep them around. Emily moved to a position of director of outreach and then became stepped in as an acting executive director when I was on parental leave. Uh, she is now working for a news agency out of Victoria, and I encourage you to find her and read her work. It's always great. And Adriana has been, you know, a stalwart with our research team, contributing so much. And it's just so great to have that ability. And Teal, of course, uh, is just like the mainstay of our research, and he'll talk lots more about everything after the talk. And as JB mentions in the tack in the chat. Thank you to so many different volunteers who've helped in so many different ways. You know, the one challenge we have going forward is to continue to build the association, to build membership and to grow. Um, but I'm so proud of what we have done so far.